nuclear attack, Putin, World War Three, stock market crash, all happening at once this morning. Look at this. Let me just scroll forward. There you go. Look at the markets go down. We've got some major volatility this morning. I'm down 1.76. Not literally. Well, yes, literally, but not literally. It's because I'm in margin. So when I'm up, I'm up a lot. When I'm down, I'm down a lot. I exaggerate. It doubles my position, my moves. What this does is uh, is uh, sends sends my portfolio down and I'm looking to buy more at certain levels, but not yet. It's not there. Let's talk about this. We have some volatility because the, the, the missiles have now been fired into Russia. Markets don't like uncertainty. They use it to dump the market to buy it back. It's, an ex- it's more than an, an, an excuse for Wall Street, to be fair. Because is Apple doing worse today? Is Microsoft doing worse today? Is NVIDIA doing worse today? No, they're not. And most of those companies are not affected by this anyway. However, because there is uncertainty in the world right now, and of course there is, the markets have used that opportunity to sell off, to buy back. What do you do? What do I do? Absolutely nothing. I do not sell, but what I do do is is buy. I do buy more when it goes down. So have patience. Wait, this is not a big enough drop yet. Let's talk about it. What's happened? As expected, Ukraine have now fired into Russia with long range missiles. Uh, But also in the last couple of hours, what we've had is Russia have said that uh, they have, uh, Putin has now written into law if a country supported by a nuclear power fires long range missiles into our country we can, we will be considering using nuclear power to fire back now if you think this couldn't happen ever remember Hiroshima. It did happen to end the Second World War. It was decided between the United States and uh, Sir Winston Churchill to drop a bomb on Japan. It does happen. I don't believe, and I've said before, there's not going to be World War Three, but Russia could, could decide to drop a bomb on Ukraine. No idea what that would gain. The idea is they wanted to invade, uh, they wanted to, you know, occupy, take over Ukraine by bombing it and making it inhabitable. What the hell's the point? I don't get it. It just escalates the war. It makes no sense. But does war ever make sense? Well, you decide that one. But let's have a look at what's just happened. Ukraine war latest. Ukraine launches six US. There's the one. US long-range missiles at Russia, Moscow says. No doubt about it, really. Um, We can trust Russia on this one, I guess, because uh, that's what we agreed for them to do. Ukrainian troops have launched an attack against a Russian border region with six US long-range missiles. Now, let's be absolutely clear. These are not intercontinental missiles. They can't... I don't believe... I don't believe they can fire on uh, Moscow. They would have to be inside Russia to fire on Moscow. Of course, they were inside Russia. I don't know if they're still there, but they were recently, of course. But uh, uh, we're we're talking, I think it's something like 150 miles. Um, So we're talking still relatively uh, just over the border. But nevertheless, uh, Moscow has said it comes after Vladimir Putin approved an updated doctrine lowering the threshold for the use of nuclear weapons. OK, let's scroll down. Uh, Moscow says Ukraine has hit Russia with long range missiles. Let's uh, look at this. This post here is important. Putin signs off on a new nuclear doctrine after U.S. missile move. Vladimir Putin has approved an updated nuclear doctrine saying that Russia could consider nuclear weapons if it is subject to a conventional missile assault on it uh, it supported by a nuclear power. Well, that's exactly what has happened this morning. Markets are down. Instability. For me, opportunity. Honestly, at the end of the day, you know, our businesses within our 
uh, uh, a stock market are doing well. They haven't stopped selling or doing anything. Inflation's coming down. Everything's okay other than this macro condition. So there's no reason why stocks would be massively down today other than Wall Street are selling to get out because they know everybody else will sell. That's all it is. It's preempting what people do. I know uh, using the word opportunity isn't a, a wonderful thing when we're talking about wars and nuclear and all the rest of it. However, as investors, this is what you do. When the markets go down, you have two choices, fearful, sell out and get out, or you buy when it goes down. If you've got loads of money in your Wall Street and you're a multi-millionaire, multi-billionaire, sell because you've bought at the bottom, you've made your money, you're up the top, sell. Why not? However, for those who want to be the future of millionaires and billionaires, and I'd like to be a millionaire by the end of the decade, to do so, you've got to buy these dips. That's how it works. So this is your opportunity. I wouldn't be buying rubbish. I wouldn't be buying the macro. Uh, sorry, I wouldn't be buying the Russell, but I would be buying uh, stocks. Uh, I would be buying the S&P. Uh, I've just got to wait for a big enough dip for it to make sense using margin. You can't just keep buying and buying and buying. This could drop a lot further. As I said, it would uh, as we went into the um, uh, uh, NVIDIA earnings. Anyway, the decision to change Russia's official nuclear doctrine has been in process for months, but Putin signing it this week appears to be a response to the Biden administration allowing Ukraine to fire American long-range missiles into Russia. We won't talk any more about that. I want to end this and get back to the stocks. Let's bring this back up again. I've got to adjust that uh, so I can not have to keep re leaning forward. The stock market has gone down this morning. How low is it going to go? Well, let's just uh, let's just have a little look. The S and P. If we actually sort of stand back, and it's very important to stand back, take pause, not to be a Putin and sort of react all the time. We want to be proactive, not reactive. Uh, if you look at it, look, we're down two point four two. Now this is just the S and P, not my margin position. Two point four two in a week. That's quite a bit. That's getting near the. That's getting very close to the carry trade. Which after the carry trade, remember how the market boosted. Uh, so it's quite a significant drop. But let's go back a bit further. We're still up over the month. Now, if we can go lower than the month, back to the carry trade situation, back to down maybe here uh, around the five twenty four another sort of 12 bucks, then I would buy some more with the with, with, with margin because I've been trimming it off a little bit. Now I can buy some more. Okay. But if you are using margin, if you're, if you're not using margin and you've got cash, this is a great time to start buying in. If you're using margin, you've got to uh, g give extra room for it because, of course, margin costs you money and uh, margin will amplify the gains. And if you buy too much and then it goes down, eventually you can get margin called, of course. It's not uh, not very likely on the S&P that it will keep resetting and giving you more room and it won't it won't want to close out the S&P on a margin. So don't worry about it too much, but just bear that in mind. It is a concern. Over three months, though, look, we're up 5%. So as you can see, we're not we're not there yet. We're getting we're getting close, but we're not there yet. Got to hold back a bit more, and that could come just before the Nvidia earnings as well. Uh, on t this is all happening at the same time. Bit of a trifactor, if you like. So for me, I'm just waiting and holding and watching. And if the, if I get a big enough drop, I will jump in. Uh, my Coca Cola, look, you see, my defensives are doing a good job now. They've kind of bottomed out now. This gives me more encouragement to buy Coca-Cola because um, you can see uh, this is defensive. And I said even defensives are under attack at the moment as Coca-Cola has been going down. But it's starting to consolidate now around this 61, around this $61. So this is good. This gives me extra confidence, but I'm still not buying because... I've only got so much money, I've not got unlimited funds. And the idea is on the 1st of January, I want to buy, um, I want to transfer $8,000 on margin to, to uh, my Roth IRA, get a 3% back match. So that brings the cost down from 5% on margin 
uh, interest down to two because effectively I pay that off in a year, less than a year. So it'll virtually be free anyway. Uh, and then I want to buy co co Coca-Cola. If I buy the S&P on a dip today that, and use more of my margin, then I'm limited to buy any more if it drops lower. And I'm certainly limited to buy any more in January for Coca-Cola. And I still think we could have a little bit of a, uh, a you know, a further, a ver further drop and maybe a period of consolidation. Uh, whether it will take me to 1st of January, I don't know. I've got another sort of six weeks to go, uh, five, five and a half. So let's see if I can get there. If not, let it go. Doesn't matter. Anyway, be careful today. If you are buying the dip, uh, it's great. If you've got cash, of course, you're going back a few weeks. Uh, getting a discount in a few weeks, which is good because the earnings are good. This is a reaction to what's going on. Um, but if you are using margin, then you need to wait for it to go a bit lower, uh, particularly if you're already like me, already in, fully, fully in. You need bigger dips where it can lower your averages, not increase them. But uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to make your own choice. Click above my head uh, for all the links down below in the description over here and over here. I'll put more videos that will be of interest. Until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other.